Hello everyone, my name is May Park. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Lotus thank you card using watercolors. I'll be using heat embossing and die cutting techniques as well. This is the Lotus stamp set I designed for all to new and I'll be using this set for today's card. I've wanted to play with this set for a long time but I haven't had a chance to make any card until today. So I'm so excited for today's project. Before I start it, I want to talk a little bit about watercoloring mediums and watercolor paper. There are so many watercoloring mediums you can choose from and I'll be sharing what I've tried for over the last few years. You can watercolor with water-based dye inks such as alternate crisp dye inks or Timholtz Distress inks. Just press the ink pad onto an acrylic block and use a paintbrush to pick up the color and watercolor your images. Watercoloring with dye inks is a great way to get more out of your inks you already have on hand. These are Dovent watercolor pencils. It looks similar with a normal colored pencil at first, but once you add water, they give beautiful look of watercolors. Simply draw with watercolor pencil and then run a wet paint brush over it, then colors will be turning into watercolor wash. Watercolor pencils are easy to use and relatively cheap, and it doesn't leave you with a mess to clean up. Tim Holtz Distress Markers are a great option for watercoloring as well. You can just apply your marker directly on the paper, then use a wet paint brush to color your image. Or scribble your marker onto an acrylic block and use a wet paint brush to pick up the color and watercolor your image. Watercolor markers usually have both a brush tip and a fine tip that is perfect for outlining and detail work. These are Tombow dual brush pens, which is also good for watercoloring. I only use these markers once, and I love how the paint blends well with water. With markers, you can have more control when you add shading on your imaging or when you color small detailed imaging. This is Peerless Watercolors book and it is my favorite watercoloring medium. I made my own watercolor booklet inspired by Jennifer McGuire's video. I cut the seeds into 2.5 inches by 2 inches and put them inside of each sleeve along with some watercolor paper for the color reference. I added a seed of acetate between each sleeve so I can use it as a color palette. I just love their bright and vibrant colors and I also love how these watercolors are so easy to apply and blend. This is the watercolor pen set that I bought at Michael's for $4 at the discount. I rarely use this watercolor set because the colors are so beautiful to just look at it. This is Kurada Kegansai Tanbi 36 watercolor set. I bought this set just because it includes one of my favorite colors, which is mint green. I use this watercolor set most of the time as it is very convenient to use and it also has beautiful colors. I used to use Van Gogh watercolor paint when I started watercoloring in 2013. Since I was a beginner at the time, I wasn't impressive with the result of this watercolor paint, even though it's considered as a great watercolor product to many people. This is Micello Mission Gold 36 watercolor set. I paid about $65 for these watercolors at Amazon. I love the variety of colors in this set and they are so vibrant and easy to blend. I find myself using this set more often these days. Today I'm going to use Daniel Smith's Extra Fine Watercolor Dot card for the first time. Since it's a try-it card, it won't work for coloring large images. 
this watercolor set include the highest pigmented colors. As I told you, it is my first time using this watercolor, so I'm not sure how it would work for my watercoloring today. These are different types of watercolor paper I have tried over the last few months. I'm not a professional watercolorist or anything else, but I learned using the right watercolor paper for my watercolor project is very important. Long story short, my favorite watercolor paper is Archie's Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. It's the most expensive paper among these watercolor papers, but it's worth the price. Cold pressed paper is not extremely textured and it doesn't absorb water very quickly, so you can blend colors without worrying about it drying too quickly. The watercolor paper you are seeing on the left side is Archie's Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper and the other one is Timur's watercolor paper. Can you notice the color difference? Tim Holtz paper is much wider than Archie's paper. For today's project, I decided to use Tim Holtz watercolor paper because I want my whole design extra clean and white with pop of colors. Then I'm gonna treat my paper with anti-static powder because I will heat emboss my images later. There are two types of anti-static powder. I usually use Inca Dinka Do Embossing Magic Powder Bag when I work on large area like background stamping. I use EK Success Embossing Powder tool for small area, especially when I work on my sentiment. I'm pulling out my stamps from the Lotus stamp set and I'll be stamping the images with Balsamac Watermark ink on watercolor paper. I'm gonna apply some Ranger Super Fine Detail Gold Embossing Powder and tap off the excess. I'm repeating the same process until I have enough images to color. I'm using a small paint brush to remove any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. Then I'll heat set my images with heat tool until it's completely melted. Now it's time for water coloring. I'm gonna turn on some music and speed up the painting process so you can watch me color. So I'm done with my order coloring and I'll be die cutting my images with Lotus die set. I'm gonna pull out the dies from the set and secure them on my paper using washi tape. Then I'll be running them through my color book die cutting machine. Since there is no die for the stamp, I'm first cutting my stamps with scissors. I was running out of pink paint from Daniel Smith's watercolor set. So I watercolored my extra images using Mizello Mission Gold watercolor set. Now I'm going to assemble my die cut images on my card. 
I'll be using wood grain white cardstock from Altenew for my card base today. I'm trimming my paper into 4 and a quarter inch by 5 and a half inch using Timot's paper trimmer. I'll be adding some ink splatters to give an interest to my card front. I'm mounting my panel on an 8 side top folding card using double side tape. I'm prepping a piece of dark gray cardstock with EK Success embossing powder tool as I'm gonna heat emboss my sentiment. I'm pulling out a few different sentiments from Altenew Many Thanks stamp set as I'm not sure which sentiment would work for my card. And I'm mounting the sentiments on a click block and inking up with personal watermark ink. I'll sprinkle some white embossing powder and tap off the excess. I'm using my paintbrush to flick away and stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. Then I'll heat set my sentiments with a heat tool. I'm gonna mount my flowers and leaves on my card front using foam tape. spend a half hour on putting them together, but I had to keep trying until I was satisfied with the placement. To finish off my card, I'll be adding some pretty pink brush clear drum list on the card front. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed watching my video tutorial and got some inspiration to create your own watercolor card. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye bye!